Microsoft Forms is a simple and lightweight tool that allows you to create forms, surveys, and quizzes in minutes. With Forms, you can collect responses in real time, view automatic charts to visualize your data, and export results to Excel for additional analysis or grading. It is a user-friendly tool that requires no training, and respondents can fill it out on any browser without having to install a separate app. All you need is a free Microsoft account to get started. Whether you're an educator, business professional, or just planning a fun-filled event, Microsoft Forms should be your go-to app to interacting with your audience. Using Microsoft Forms has several benefits no matter your experience level. For starters, it's easy to use and you won't need the support page up while you create your content. You can collect responses the moment it's been submitted in a format that makes analyzing it a breeze. Best of all, it offers a simple drag and drop interface that makes it effortless to add questions and customize the design of your form. How effortless? I'll show you. To use Microsoft Forms, you need to log into your 365 account. If you don't have one, you can create one for free by following the link here on office.com. Alternatively, you could also just open your browser to forms.office.com and follow the same process. But let's start from scratch so you know where to find the Forms app. If you have your Microsoft 365 account set up, click the Sign In button. Once you're in, select the Apps icon on the menu bar and find Forms. If this is your first form, you'll see an empty area with no recent documents. Otherwise, this is the dashboard where you can revisit old forms to edit them, remove them, or check your responses. To create a new form, you would just click the button here. Or if it's a quiz you're looking to make, select the option for New Quiz. You can also choose an existing template that fits your needs. If I select View All, you'll find several forms and quizzes that you can customize. Simply select a template and in the form, click in any section and it lets you change the questions, the available answers, or just delete it altogether. But for now, let's start from scratch. Go back to your dashboard and select New Form. A blank template will appear and this grayed out box is where you can enter the title of your form. Let's create an Excel survey for this template. Click into the gray box and enter your title. By entering title, Microsoft Forms auto-generates some recommended fields for you. You can add as many as you like or none at all. In the title text box, there is a link to add an image or video. We can either upload media directly from our computer or search the internet for one. So let's find an Excel image to include in the title. Search a keyword and when you find an image you like, select it and click Add. Looks good. Below the title is a subtitle area. You can leave this blank if you want to, but I'll enter some text. You'll see that as we add more information, the Microsoft Forms recommendations continue to update. But let's choose our first survey question. There are four options visible, and even more when you open the drop-down arrow. I'll go over each of these, but for now, we'll stick with choice. I'll type in my first question, and while you can enter and add whatever options you want, Microsoft Forms offers some recommendations. I actually like some of these. Instead of clicking all, I'll choose the ones I want, and let's add an other option for the recipient to enter a unique answer. At the bottom of the field, you have two toggle buttons to allow for multiple answers to be selected and for the question to be required. We'll make it a required entry. You can also click the three little dots for more settings. We could shuffle the order of the options, make the choice a drop down, add a subtitle, or create a branch. I'll show you how to add branching later, but it basically lets you direct the recipient to a specific section of the form based on their answer. This comes in handy if the answer to your question determines that the following sections do not apply to the person taking the survey. That way you can redirect them to the end. Now if we click outside the first area, you'll see how the form looks so far. By clicking back into the first question, you're given more suggestions to your options. I like what we have, so we'll stick with it. For the next form item, I'll choose text. This allows the user to enter anything they want. We can ask about their favorite features of Excel. I'll keep the answer as required and toggle on the long answer option in case they want to go in depth. You see the red asterisk next to the question? That's telling the user this section is required. If they tried to submit the survey without entering something, they'd get an error message. Next, we'll use a rating field. Add rating and it defaults to a five star setting, although you can change the stars to numbers or some other symbol. You can also change the number of options. Let's select six and turn off the required button. 
just so the other options are clear, click the three dots and select Label. This allows us to set a description for the highest and lowest ratings. How about we throw in a date feature? Add another field by clicking Date. I'll enter the question first, but you can see the calendar input option available below. Let's choose an image too. Click the image icon and search for Data Analysis. Choose your image and hit Add. You can also move the fields around if you don't like their ordering. Simply grab the six dots above the field and move it where you'd like. Release the mouse button to drop it. Microsoft Forms also lets you create unique sections. Each section will group their own questions and show them on separate pages when someone visits the survey. You can use sections when you have questions that may not be directly related to another set of questions. To add a section, open the drop-down in your new form element and select Section. You'll be prompted to add the title, and since this is Section 2, scroll back to the top and enter a title for the first section, which includes your existing form fields. Let's select a new field under the drop-down called Likert, which is meant to gauge the opinions of the user with multiple selections. Enter the title, and in the field of options, I'll delete all but two. Rename the two available options, yes and no in this case. And now I'll set the question for each row. You can also add rows when needed. Now I'll add a net promoter score field under the dropdown. This is kind of like a ranking or rating option. Go ahead and enter your question. You can adjust the labels if you want, but I'll leave them. I set the field to be required and it's good to go. Finally, we'll work with branching. I want to add a choice field and depending on the answer, the user will be redirected to another area. First, add the choice field and enter the question. Choose the options for yes and no. Next, create a separate text field for the user to input their comments. Going back to the previous choice field, click the three dots and add branching. Next to each option, you can choose the redirection in the drop-down. If answered yes, the user goes to the next question, the text field. If they answer no, they go to the end of the form and the text field isn't shown. The form looks good, so let's preview it. By clicking preview at the top of the page, you can see how the survey looks on both computer and mobile. You see how we can't view section two on the next page? Let's fill out the form and see how everything looks. You can enter the date here or just click on the calendar icon. And our branching works great. With our form questions looking good, let's make a few function and appearance changes. First, let's go back to section two, and in the title, let's upload an image. Just like before, click the image icon and insert the media file. Now we'll change the overall look of the form. By clicking style on the top, you can choose an existing form template or select an original color. For this form, I'll choose an existing template. To change some of the functionality of the form, click the three dots on the top menu and select settings. You can set dates for the survey to be available or uncheck accept responses to disable any more submissions. I'll check off show progress bar, which lets the user see their progress of completion at the bottom of each page. We'll also set the form to send an email whenever I get a new survey. I'll hide the option for multiple responses and uncheck the box to allow saved responses. You can even customize a thank you message to show up upon submission if you want. If you click the present menu selection, this shows you the activity of all your respondents in a professional and presentable format. You can also click on responses on the left side of the menu to view the current submission details. Lastly, by clicking collect responses, you're given several options of how to share your Microsoft form. You have a link that can be sent to customers or colleagues, you can send an email that directs users to complete the form. This QR code is an excellent way to get feedback at events. Or you can copy the HTML script and paste it on your website. We could also share it on social media if that's easier.
Whatever your choice, all these are super convenient and let your audience reach you from any platform they want. There's no question that there are many other wonderful tools available to create forms and quizzes for your purposes. But besides it being free, Microsoft Forms makes the process as uncomplicated as you can find. I hope you found this tutorial useful and it helped shed some light on another intuitive feature Microsoft has to offer. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more tech-related content like this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Or better yet, scan the QR code for the very same survey we just built. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.